Hi, this is Hina, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. In this video, we are going to study about the weights appraisal. So in the last video about the Steiner's analysis, we had studied about the A and B angle, right? Okay, so this is the nasion to the point A and this is the nasion to the point B, okay? Now we got an angle here, right? This is the A and B angle and it denotes the relationship of the maxilla to the mandible. That is the maxillo-mandibular relation A and B, A and B, okay? So this is the third skeletal parameter. Here this mean value is 2 degrees. So normal value is 2 plus minus 2. Okay. So the A and B angle was to know the relationship of the maxilla to the mandible. That is the anterior posterior relationship or say the sagittal relationship. But Jacobson was a person who found out various shortcomings of the A and B angle. And we'll be studying about it just in a minute. So when he found out that shortcoming, he came up with a new method of assessing the sagittal skeletal discrepancy. And that was the Witt's appraisal. So now we know that Witt's appraisal is a method of assessing the sagittal skeletal discrepancy. Now, let us see the drawbacks that was seen in the A and B angle. A and B angle is kind of very prone to, you know, changes. And how does it happen? If the anterior facial height is increased in a subject, then the A and B angle appears to be reduced. And let us see how. For example, if this was our mesion, this was our point A and this was our point B. Okay, so let us see how much will be the A and B angle. So let us suppose in this case the A and B angle is 33 degrees. Now let us see what happens when the anterior facial height is increased. So now if the anterior facial height is increased, the point N that is the nesion will be somewhere here because the height is increasing, right? So now let us see the angle. The initial one was 32, right? Now, this angle is 23. So, initially it was 32, now it is 23. So, when the facial height, when the anterior facial height is increased, then the A and B angle appears reduced. Then the second thing is that, To do the width analysis, first of all, we'll construct the functional occlusal plane. What is the functional occlusal plane? It is a line that will connect the point of maximum intercuspation of the posterior teeth and it is extended forward. So this is the functional occlusal plane, FOP. Now what we do, we will construct the AO. Now the AO point is obtained by dropping a perpendicular from the point A to the occlusal plane. Okay. Horrible. <laughs> from point A to the occlusal plane. And then BO point is obtained by dropping a perpendicular from the point B to the occlusal plane. So from point B to the occlusal plane. Alright. So this is the, let me just label it. So this is the AO and this is the BO. So normally the BO is ahead of AO by 1 mm. If I just zoom in, you can see that this BO, it is little forward than the AO. So it is usually ahead by 1 mm in men. But the BO and the AO will coincide in the females. So this tracing is probably of a man. Now in class 2 malocclusion, the AO will be ahead of BO because obviously in class 2 we have 
see the maxilla is forward so a will be here obviously when you construct it this will be forward it will be well ahead of the bo and in class 3 the bo will be ahead of the ao see this is a functional occlusal plane this is the ao and this is the bo so bo is ahead of ao in the class 3 malocclusion now which appraisal also has few drawbacks here we can see that our reading or our analysis is very much dependent on the functional occlusal plane right so if there are changes in the functional occlusal plane then the analysis can vary for example if there is clockwise rotation of the occlusal plane means it shifts like this then our AO will be behind the BO okay and in case of counterclockwise rotation the BO will get behind the AO so this width appraisal is not a very confirmatory analysis and it has to be combined with other analysis as well so I hope you found the video helpful if yes do let me know in the comment section below and till we meet next time take care Allah Hafiz